Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, are you ready to make demands for your daily bread? Jesus commanded us. So when we make this demand, we make it knowing that God is waiting to hear from us. He's waiting to hear your voice. The moment he hears your voice, he wants to respond quickly. Quickly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you ready? Join me right now and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Oh, glory. I mean, yesterday, Ananabra de Kelahu Zafai. If you didn't listen to yesterday's message, I encourage you, go listen to it, praise God. Because we're sharing some very, very important things. And also, I want to encourage you to help us share this message. If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe and help us share the message. The Bible said the Lord gave the word and the company that published it was great. So you can join the great company of publishers of the word that God is giving. And if this message is really a blessing to you, we'd like to hear from you also. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, then. We are in Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse 10. Ah, you know, I was saying something yesterday. Even the teacher of the word, he doesn't teach what he knows. He too is inspired by the revelations that are coming from him. So sometimes I study the Bible, don't get me wrong, very well. I study the Bible a lot, but I don't teach based on my study. I, I, I discipline myself to teach by the inspiration of the Spirit of God because that's my calling. Okay, so I, I wait for that ministry of teaching. And once the Lord begins to move on me, which comes easily, I, began to, I begin to say things that, sincerely speaking, if I've not known the Lord, I'll be like, oh, <laughs> praise God. But over the years, I've learned and learned and I've learned to trust Him. And it has never been wrong. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are His workmanship. I was telling you yesterday, being workers of iniquity, what do they do? See, the reason they are called workers of iniquity is not because they were doing um, wicked works. It's because two reasons. You see, they were not called to the work. See? So because they were not called to the work, they don't do the work by the Spirit of God. And anything you don't do by the Spirit of God, you didn't do it in faith. And the Bible says, whatever is done without faith is sin. For example, no one will say the Lord spoke to him to go and fornicate. Are you getting that now? No one will say the Lord spoke to him to go and steal. No one will say that. Now, I've seen, um, you know these days of social media, we get to see a lot. Sometimes you don't even plan it, it pops up. For example, if, if you are, if you listen to lots of um, preaching on, on social media, it'll keep popping up. So you see the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know what I'm talking about? So, sometimes, you know, people go, I'm trying to show you the righteousness of God. People go, after all, Abraham told a lie. And God told him, no, Abraham told a lie when he got to Egypt. And they asked him, who's this lady? He said, she's my sister. That that's a lie. He intended to lie. Okay. So, someone says, oh, he did. And then he came out with great riches. So, come on. Sometimes telling small, small lies is not bad. I mean, if he gives you the advantage... You better tell the lie. What you don't realize, you know, the day the Lord said this to me, I, I was like, oh, Lord, <laughs> you know how you're asking the Lord, are you sure? <laughs> Praise God. 
So the Lord said this to me. And when I say this, you're left to believe me or not to believe me. It's, it's as simple as that. If you don't believe me, say, okay, I don't believe you in this one. No problem. I have this attitude. My job is to minister truth to you by the Spirit of God. If you believe it now, good for you. If you don't believe it now, well, I don't condemn you. I will tell you this. Wait, the Lord will visit you one day where this is this concerning this and he will reveal to you if he truly if he truly revealed it to me he will reveal it to you and that day you will realize that months ago years ago you had that thing but you didn't believe it see that now and if i'm wrong the holy spirit will give you the truth it's as simple as that so you have when you hear it's your right to believe or not so what am i saying the lord spoke to me and said I was the one that told Abraham what to say when he got into Egypt and when he got into Abimelech. Like, Lord, how? Why would you tell him to lie? And the Lord said to me, he said, take note. Abraham did not lie. Of course, I knew that. I knew Sarah. According to the Bible, Sarah was his sister. Okay. His stepsister. You know that, right? So Sarah was his stepsister. So, because I didn't tell him to lie. I told him to use the card of his sister instead of the card of his wife because of the people they were going to meet. Hmm? Now, why did the Lord have to explain that to me? It eliminates this whole thought of, so if Abraham lied, I can go and lie. But you see, God knowing that a day will come this scripture now. A day will come when this is what will save his life. I could many We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? To do those good works that God had preordained that we should walk in. So God knew. That a day will come when this thing will be the savior of Abraham's life. Cost Abraham to marry his half-sister. Now, I believe circumstances made it happen. Like the Bible said, time and chance happens to them all. So circumstances made it happen that he married his half-sister. And they lived as husband and wife. But a day came. So you don't wake up and go and call your wife who's from completely different tribe, different community, different village. And say, look, you know, just like Abraham did, let us do the same thing. That's not the spirit of God speaking to you. It's not. Look for another way. And depend on the Holy Spirit to guide you. But for you to say, after Abraham told lie that his wife was his sister, so let's do the same thing. You will get into trouble, praise God. Abraham didn't get into trouble for it. He got rich for it. And there is nowhere that God dealt with him or punished him for that action. Nowhere. You remember Isaac went to do the same thing. Now, Isaac was not instructed by the Lord to do it. According to the story, Abraham, the moment Abraham entered the city, they took his wife. And God had to rescue her by himself. But Isaac told the same thing. He said, well, our dad told us how he entered the city. So, please, let's do the same thing. But guess what? Isaac entered the city, nobody took his wife, nobody cared for his wife. Did you see that? Nobody cared for his wife. Rather, the king sat out one day and he saw Isaac, according to the scriptures, sporting with Rebekah. And the king said, ah, does brother and sister play like this? Hey, guards, come. Can you see what I'm seeing? Is that the play of brother and sister? Please call these people. Something is not right. Now, it could have gotten Isaac in trouble. But it blessed Abraham. What's the difference? The difference is Abraham did it by faith. Isaac did not do it by faith. What, how does I, how, why would he say Isaac did not do it by faith? Abraham did it by faith because he was commanded by God to do it. 
So in obeying God, he pleased God and God blessed him. Isaac did not do it by faith. He almost got into trouble. What saved Isaac was his father's name. Can you understand what I'm saying? It was the Abraham's name that saved Isaac. You know, Isaac would have been punished. You don't dare lie to the king. See that now? So, anything, you know, someone says, oh, um, um, Apostle Paul had dual citizenship and it saved his life when it, when the time, when it mattered, it saved his life. Apostle Paul was born, his, his parents were Jewish people, but Apostle Paul was born in Rome. It was none of his making. None of his make. I, I want you to follow scriptures properly so you don't start telling yourself things or having ideas. Apostle Paul was born a, a Roman citizen. Just like you have today in many countries. You give back to your child because that child is born there. You know, that child can get their passport. Of course, some countries do that. Some countries do that. See? But then, so Apostle Paul was born so. Now, in the day, Apostle Paul was to be seriously dealt with. Quickly, the card was brought out. Say, hey, I'm a Roman citizen. He knew that they would not treat a Roman citizen anyhow. He said, I'm a Roman citizen. And, and, and the, 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 the soldier, the officer, had to look at him and said, Guy, me, I'm a Roman citizen too, but I paid so much money to get my citizenship. And Paul said, well, I'm a freeborn. So, wow. Meaning, mine is more authentic than your own. See? And he was spared. Now, God, who preordained that a day like that will come when that will be the savior of Paul's life, caused him to be born in Rome. And he had the citizenship. Now you today can decide without the leading of the Spirit of God, just like we have a lot of people say, man, I'm tired of this country, I'm jackpine, I'm leaving this country. Are you doing it in faith? Or are you doing it without faith? There are people who God will instruct, they say, leave the country and to a land that I will show you just like he did to Abraham. Someone say, after all, Abraham jackpot. And things were well with him. So what am I doing here? Things are not working here for me. So I better jack by like Abraham. Abraham moved by the word of the Lord. That was faith. You, no word. He don't even bother to pray. If you dare pray, Father, just support us in this plan and we will, we will ever be grateful to you. And so it worked. So God must have supported. If not, why did it work? No, sir. It doesn't mean that way. See? So... There is a good work that you have been preordained. So now when you now leave your location and go to another place, then the word of the Lord stops coming. Now that's the reason you find a lot. You know, you hear they say that a lot of believers, you find somebody who loves God, strong in faith, and then he leaves the country and goes to another country. And then you don't hear from him. The next day, you, the next thing, you, maybe you travel to that country and you see that brother. Hey, brother Alphana, oh, yo, man. Man, I mean, everything is just cool, man. I'm not, I'm not bothered about all this nonsense you people do. Ah, brother John! Yeah, you know, you know I, I remember those days. But see, one is more enlightened today. Say, huh? What's going on? <laughs> now, now, you begin to wonder. Say, it is that society that's... It's not the society that spoiled him. I'll tell you what spoiled him. He left the environment where the word of God was coming to him to a place where the word of God was not coming to him. Yeah. You see, because the word of God will come to you in the location that God has planted. And when I say the word of God comes, I'm not talking about church. I'm not saying you, the church where you are planted, that's where the word of God will come into you. No, that, I'm not just talking about, I'm talking about the, the place where God have commanded you to stay. If you leave one city without the word of God and travel to another city to relocate or stay there, you risk receiving 
the word of God in that new place. And guess what the Bible says? Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So if the word of God is not coming to you from, not from the pastor's mouth, if the word of God is not coming to your heart from the mouth of God, you start dying. You might be going to church there, yet you will not receive the word of the Lord. Yeah. Are you learning anything? Oh, life is better. Yes, life may be better. But guess what? You have been disconnected from the good works that God had preordained. Hey, but there are people there that will preach to those. Well, you know, that's all you say. And someone goes there and says, oh, I'm preaching. I'm preaching to people. Nah. Keep my loop ready. The way you used to hear the voice of God. Do you still hear it the same way today? Hey, but I pray. Do you hear? If you don't hear the voice of God, see, seriously, you are dying. Just a matter of time. Just like Adam and Eve. You are dying. No words from the mouth of God. You are dying. It's not a curse. It's a caution. And you, you just exist. You're working, yes. You're earning better money, yes. But when last did you hear the word of the Lord? When last was your spirit rejuvenated? When last did the Lord visit you? The same you that used to receive visitation every week, every month. And now since you traveled, nothing. I'll tell you this. Just like God said in, in Malachi, it says, prove me now here with. Travel back to your former location for one month and see what happens. Then you will know the difference. But that's a clear way to know that you're out of God's will. Why? Why is it important? But, but God is everywhere now. Yeah, yes, he's everywhere. But you were not created to be everywhere. There are good works that God has preordained. There are people that God has preordained that you will be a blessing to. There are people, do you know sometimes, maybe let's take church service, for example, attending church service. Do you know there are people that just anytime they come to church, they are looking out for you? No, have you, have you experienced that? Even you, every time you go to, there's this particular sister or there's this particular brother that you just want to see. Anytime you see them, you're just happy. Not because they give you anything. Or, or sometimes it can be the way the person worships. Sometimes it can be the, person, the way the person. Sometimes it can be the way the person dresses. Anytime you walk into it, just like ah man, ah, that brother. Wow, wow. Not because you desire anything. Just like ah. Then one day, like come, I've not been seeing this brother. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? It puts a check in your heart. You know what? That brother is doing a good work by giving you joy. I say that now. So you, you, I don't feel like going to church today. Ah, that brother. Ah, or that sister. Ah, I'll go. See, the presence of that person, because that person is where he's supposed to be. All he's doing is lifting up holy hands. And you walk into that place where, wow, I wish I can worship God like this person. Ah, I'll come again next week. I wish I can worship God like this person. Do you know, by that person just lifting up his hands, he's doing the good work that God has preordained. There are people who got saved like that because of someone else. There are people who are doing great mighty works because of someone else. Guess what? They were doing the good works that God preordained. Now imagine they quickly, because of offense, because of whatever, they leave their position of authority or where God had placed them and say, hey, pastor offended me. I'm not coming to church again. And then they don't come to church. And here's this fellow God is walking on. Okay, and the person comes to church, he doesn't see you. Like, ah, this brother was not in church. I hope all is well. Next Sunday he comes, ah, this brother, ah. So he goes, where is this brother? Hmm. He doesn't come to church again. No. Why? What happened? I, well, I don't know. Try to visit him. He answer his call. And then I say, ah, something must have happened. Something must have happened. Oh, why? The next time this person is like, well, that brother will not be there. We don't even know what happened to that brother. Why should I even go? <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Stay back. What has happened? That brother have started doing iniquity. I pray the Lord give you understanding today. There is a good work that you have been ordained for. There is the good work 
that you've been ordained for. Don't you think it's time for you to begin to locate it by the Holy Spirit and walk in it? God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.